Man, got around. OG7 back here. Hey guys, I gotta be honest with you for a second here. I don't really believe in Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and Easter and Halloween or any of those American holidays that I have researched to know that the true pagan meaning behind. But I do celebrate getting together with people who love me and trust me enough to show me WWW. And you might say to yourself, hey, OG Silverback, what's WWW? Well, WWW to me means work, women, and wonder. Work for me is the people who have helped me to get acting, bodyguard, bouncing, personal trainer, and instructor jobs here in Vegas, man. Because, dude, like, without having an income, man, and a stream of income, you can't really look to change your life, guys. You, sometimes you got to be realistic with yourself, and that's why I always ask you guys to at least get a $25 coaching call so we can talk about different careers if you aren't happy with your career or how to change your income and how to get to the next level. Um, women, for me, man, is the people who are high-status males that I associate with that expose me to the loads of lovely and available ladies in their social circle. And I talk to you guys a lot who follow me here on the channel that it's important to hang around with high status males or alpha males or, you know, guys with high social status because then you, you, you get what's called um, the halo effect. And what that means is if you're hanging out with a big baller type of a dude, the women that are on that level that recognize he's a big baller, then they automatically go on to halo you into that group to think that you're a big baller. And all I can say to you then is to fake it until you make it so that, you know, you practice um, what they call NLP, Merriman Modeling. When you hang around with this big baller enough where you start dressing like him, talking like him, walking like him, acting like him, you're going to get the results that he gets. And the last one, guys, is wonder. Wonder is the people that allow me to travel with them to strange and exotic lands, bro, because I'm going to tell you something, man. No matter what you guys might believe out there, you really don't know yourself until you travel to a foreign country, bro. Because once you travel to a foreign country, man, it breaks up your paradigm. Like whatever you believe your concepts or your perceptions of life and reality are based on your social and economic background, your hood, your barrio, where you're from, <laughs> your, your family heritage, what you've been taught to believe through textbooks and things. When you travel to a foreign country, bro, it shakes all that up, man. And it really helps you to understand not just life in general, but where you are as far as like the um, the sexual market value. So, man, I wanted to say something to you, man. This is very important, man. I wanted you guys to find five things to be thankful for today. So even though I don't believe in Thanksgiving because I know the history of what the... Um, the so-called people who discovered America, what they did to the indigenous people when they landed here. Um, and I can, you know, you can get into all, you know, it's, it's time to be thankful for this or that. But what I can say for sure is on today, man, this Thanksgiving holiday, 2022, I want to ask you guys to find five things to be thankful for. And some of you might have a problem, you know, doing that because I understand some of you aren't where you want to be. Maybe that's why, you know, some guys are trolls or they're haters or they're keyboard warriors or cell soldiers. But I want to try to help you guys, man, to break out of that and to look for positivity. And this is what I want to share with you today in this short video. You always want to look for the silver lining, man, in anything. You want to look, if somebody serves you a lemon, you want to make lemonade, dude. You want to look for the good outcome in any bad situation. So just for today, guys, I want to ask you... To just sit down, man, and find five things to be thankful for. And for those of you that don't know where to start, you know, I'm going to help you out, man, with what I did. Because I went to this thing called a Friendsgiving yesterday. 
And this was at a millionaire, a, a multi-millionaire's house. He's a producer, director, writer, movie star, martial artist, stunt dude. He's just an accomplished dude. Retired Special Forces, Green Beret dude, Black Ops dude. He's just an awesome person. And he produces and directs not just uh, movies for other people, but his own movies, man. Because he, he was telling me the reason that Vin Diesel got famous is Vin Diesel and his brother actually wrote and produced their own movie and that's how Vin Diesel got famous he did a documentary you can google it guys and just like Spike Lee did and then this, there's this guy called um the guy from Pulp Fiction what's his name the uh director there um dang man what's the director's name from Pulp Fiction man he also he also was the director from Dust Till Dawn um Anyway, whoever the director is for Pulp Fiction, sorry guys, it was a late night. He directs and stars in his own movie. So out here in Vegas, I've noticed a lot of famous dudes, what they do is they, they started out, um, you know, writing their own movies and stuff. And then they, they produce them, but then they star in their own movie. You know what I mean? Quentin Tarantino, that's the dude's name. So anyway, those are just examples. So this guy is an example. So we... Uh, we had a Friendsgiving, and what that was is uh, I, I work for three different production companies right now, guys. But the one main production company, this dude's his house is like a mansion, dude. It's got a big front yard, a backyard with a pool, and it's got a desert theme, like a beach theme in the back with, with tables and chairs. And he's got an upstairs, downstairs, and this big-ass garage and a nice living room, a, a dining room, living room, day room kitchen just it's, it's laid out man so it, movies actually rent his place to shoot movies when they're trying to show a big ballers pad right so anyway we did a friends giving so it was like it was a couple other producers there and it was uh some directors there some camera dudes cinematographers and you know of course actors because i'm an actor right so a lot of some people i just want to share with you a lot of people in hollywood are not religious like you guys or maybe me. You know, I, I consider myself a religious dude, but they don't really believe in like the same gods we believe in, man. Like they don't. I think I'm just saying, guys. I don't know for sure. I can't speak for them, but I know some of them are, are for sure atheists. I've heard them say that, and then some of them are just like they're spiritual, but they don't believe in like God. And then I believe from my heart, and they they've never told me this, but I believe if some of them are Luciferians, bro. I think that they. I think they worship the devil, or maybe they're not Satanists, but Luciferianists. They, uh, they, they, they practice this philosophy. You know, they don't know what tomorrow brings, like all this heaven and hell stuff. But while you're here on Earth, they believe and get all the money you can get. So anyway, <laughs> when it came time, it was a, it was like a potluck. You know, people bringing some people brought turkey and ham and string beans and mashed potatoes and cornbread and stuffing and cranberry sauce you know your boy bought desserts because i don't cook some people brought alcohol you know it's was, it was, it was about 40 to 50 people there so when it came time for the food to be served you know you like serve yourself like an assembly line thing because this dude's got a big ass house and a big kitchen and so before we got to eat you know they, they did this thing. They didn't do a prayer, but they went around the room to say, you know, you had to say what, what you're, you're thankful for. If I can, I'm going to try to get the video. Um, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to get it so you guys can see what some of these big ballers say in the privacy of their own social circle. But anyway, when it got to me, I named the five things that I'm thankful for in my life, and I think that if I share it with you guys, those of you who are lost or don't know what to be thankful for, because I think a lot of you, some of you people out there, I think the reason you're haters or trolls or keyboard warriors or cell soldiers is because you're always comparing your life with other people's lives, man. And one thing I've noticed living here in Vegas for sure is so many big ballers and millionaires and billionaires and famous people, dude, just levels of fame I, I i'm not gonna say i can never get there but they they're there and i'm not 
So you can, you know, you can kind of be jealous, I guess, a little bit. But what I've learned to do is I just compare with what I have. I compare me with where I am and where I want to go. And it gives me what's called an attitude of gratitude. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you the five things that I'm thankful for. Number one, dude, I think it's important. I'm thankful for my life, dude. Because after contacting the macaroni back in December of last year and, and passing away twice, in the hospital, dude, I had prayed to God, bro. I had prayed to God that if he'd let me live through this, bro, I was going to travel the world. And it's funny how things work out, guys. I prayed to God. I said, hey, God, because I wasn't ready to go. I mean, I know I talk all that. It's a good day to die stuff, but I just know when it was time to go, I wasn't ready because when it's your time, you're never ready. You're never ready, bro. Even at 61 years old, I wasn't ready to go. And I prayed to the Almighty Father, you know, if you get me, if you give me my life, you know, let me survive through this. I'm going to travel the world because I was so busy chasing this Hollywood dream, making movies and being a big martial artist and all this shiza, bro. So I just said, if you get me through this, I'm going to travel the world. What's funny, the day I got out of the hospital, bro, the next day I was, I was still all weak and stuff. And my uh, my agent called me, told me I had to go to this audition. I told my agent, like, hey, man, I'm sick. I'm still recovering. You know, I, was, I, was, uh, I wasn't contagious. I was clear, but I just was weak, bro. The, the macaroni makes you weak. He said, look, my man, you need to go to this audition, bro, just to show that you're back. And so it was that audition I went to for a martial arts movie produced by some Asian um, producers. That they saw my talent and gave me this opportunity to move to a foreign country, man. So it just shows that, uh, you know, sometimes dudes showing up is half the game. So I think that life, being thankful for your life just for another day. Because, dude, each day you're above ground, you have the opportunity to right the wrongs and to make your life what you want it to be. And for those of you that don't know how to do that. Go to my Patreon, sign up for a $25 coaching call, and I guarantee you one thing, guys. Us together as men, we can troubleshoot your life and get you to where you want to be. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it's very simple. It's just setting your goals and having an accountability buddy to keep you accountable and realistic. Number two, man, is your health, bro. It's important to be thankful for your health because there's a lot. I remember when I had the macaroni, bro, I couldn't breathe. At all, I was on a breathing machine, dude. I couldn't, man, I was bedridden. And uh, once you go through that, you appreciate being able to ambulate, walk around, run, work out, whatever, even if you got ailments, you know what I mean? But if, if you got your health, man, and you can, you can walk around and do things, be thankful for your health. And how do you be thankful for your health, man? You work out each and every day, bro. I, I was just studying these when I... <laughs> When YouTube gave me that community strike and I couldn't upload videos for a week, I was just looking at other YouTube channels and I found this channel and they were talking about the importance of walking and jumping rope and stuff like that and cardio and stretching, which I know I know it's important, but it really explained to me that if you really value your health, if you're thankful for your health, you'll, you'll give thanks by working out regularly, dude, because working out keeps your body like a fine-tuned machine. Number three is your wealth, man. You want to be thankful for whatever job you have, dude, that allows you to make money, whether you're unemployment, you're an unemployment, a janitor, a garbage man, a dishwasher, a cook. Whatever you are, be thankful because, dude, once you once you are, have the ability to generate income, then hopefully you can develop a budget where you can start saving money. Because you want to be able to save money for two reasons. One, for emergencies. And two, to start investing. Oh, actually three. And then to start your own business. If you have a problem with those concepts, go to my Patreon for a $25 coaching call. And we can work it out, man. But the main thing for sure, you got to appreciate, you know, your wealth, dude. And that's just for wherever you are, your ability to generate income. A lot of people hate their jobs. And I want to tell you, man, you got to appreciate the job you have because it allows you to put food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head. Maybe you don't have enough money to travel and do those different things. But that's where my Patreon comes in and we can talk about it as men 
and figure out a way whether you got to get a second job or go back to school or do something online where you can generate more money. But you want to appreciate your current wealth, whatever that is. That's just your ability to make money. Number four, dude, it's very important to be thankful for your possessions, man. I remember when I got out of the University of Life and my buddy, Big Dave, may he rest in peace, he used to go to L.A. and buy cars at auctions, and then he would fix them up and sell them. He used to make a lot of money. So this dude gifted me a Honda Civic, man. I think it was a, I don't want to exaggerate, I think it was like a 1980, a 1989 Honda Civic, bro. It was all rusty. It was a hatchback five-speed. And I used to wash and wax that thing every week. And, and I was living in the halfway house for parolees. And guys used to clown me like, Hey, man, why y'all washing that car and waxing it, man? It's a piece of caca. But I was like, it's my piece of caca. And I firmly believe that me appreciating that car, bro, I had an attitude of gratitude and went out to the universe. I took good care of that car, changed the oil, the brakes and stuff, dude, the fluids, man. All even the windshield wiper and fluids and waxed it and washed it, bro. That allowed me to get a maxima and then from there I got a maximum from there, I got a Lexus and from there a Mercedes and from there a Jaguar. I think that uh, that attitude of gratitude for me appreciating what I had. Because it's just something about the universe and I, I don't want to get all esoteric on you guys, but it Life is bigger than just what we see in front of us. It's, it's your thoughts and your beliefs. So I just want to share with you, I believe that it's very important to be thankful for your current possessions. And they may not be the best possessions, but remember this, they're yours. And that's the main thing. Number five, last but not least, man. I think it, I found last night, man, that it's, it's very important to be thankful for your family and your friends, dude, or let's say relationships, because I find being here in Vegas, I want to share this with you. Now, I remember I experienced this in California. I don't I don't have the best family relationships because sometimes, dude, whether you're from a foreign country or you're impoverished, sometimes your family can be your worst enemy, bro, because they're dis dysfunctional and they don't know any better because if you've been raised in a single parent household and you're your dad's in prison or he's a drug dealer or he's out in the streets or maybe he's dead and you don't know what a positive male role model is. You don't really understand family relationships and dynamics. And so you're repeating the cycle of not really giving an ish about anybody, right, being selfish. But one thing I experienced in Cali, man, my fr I've, I've, I have friends in Cali that are way more family to me than any family I've ever had except for maybe my mom. And uh, here in Vegas, for sure, because when the, when the microphone came around to me and it's like, hey, OG Silverback, what are you thankful for? This is actually this is actually the list that I said, and I just wanted to write it down so I made sure I didn't miss it. But I told him, this is what I told him. I said, hey, I'm very thankful to have met you group of people when I got here to Vegas because meeting you guys and associating with you guys has given me opportunities that I never could imagine I would have had in my life. And I'm thankful for you guys. And they're, they they just said, yeah, we're, we're family here. They said that to me. And so uh, they even did a quote from Vin Diesel's movie, uh, Fast and Furious, whatever, some family speech he made. I don't know. But everybody clapped because I, I touched them, you know, because I meant it. Um, but the main thing to me, guys, I want you to start to understand how to... Be around positive people that love you, man, and trust you and want the best for you, bro. And they're more than just a friend to you because a friend can be your family if you choose them wisely. And and sometimes your friends can treat you better than your family ever could. I hope you're enjoying this day and, and enjoying a lot of blessings and good food and, and good fun and good family.